This took entirely too long to find. <laughs> this 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 little box here, this little blade blob, cute little recycle bin. <clears throat> I worked for this company a million years ago. It was awesome back then, before whatever. Um, and uh, they had a recycling uh, truck service too, and so they had all these cute little recycling bins in everybody's desk for whatever odds and sods and then when we sold the recycling division we had all these recycling cute little bins and they said whoever wants to take a bunch home uh, i think this is my last one we used to have like 50 in the house <laughs> gave them to friends got rid of them. um <clears throat> but this is ancient stuff this is exactly way back when <coughs> excuse me we used to do <coughs> robot competitions in rtl toronto this is one of the bins that i used to have on my work area to keep odds and sods of my stuff my stuff where you know what i'm modifying and or whatever and i haven't been in here in literally forever and i couldn't even find it for the longest time and you can find some really old zombified wires where i was experimenting and you can see the zomb zombification dun, dun, dun. this guy also you can see where I was experimenting with third-party sensors and making my own. This is a reed switch. In there is a vacuum, and there's two little metal plates in there, those metal, metal tabs that when a magnet gets close to it, they open up. The problem with this one is that the end broke off, so I can't use it, but I remember this now. So I had this as a sensor, and I made my own wire, as I was want to do back then. This is a train wire that I meant to fix years and years ago silly v. i can't remember what light system that was from but whatever uh, so this this is the motor that i got from shopping home <laughs> uh, one of the motors i got from shopping home uh no this isn't the one i got from shopping home this is this is a motor that did this come out of the train i think this might have come out of one no nah, i might not have i can't I can't honestly remember where I got this one from then. But anyway, silly. But it, it's got gears on both sides, which I didn't have when I was a kid. Um, this is that guy I was talking about. Techno stuff. One of the guys I was talking about. I can't remember what kind of sensor this is. But um, I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while. I would also in here um, for my soldering. Uh, one of my cut wires. This is the top of that reed sensor. <laughs> and uh so it's supposed to go on top like that and then it's you know whatever so um what else do we have in here we have um well just an old colored two by eight this is my first well one of my first um potentometers or potentometers anyway it's a variable um uh, and um i put uh, a rotation sensor basically but it's um it only goes like 180 degrees or 90 degrees uh, I don't know if it still works. Actually, let's just try that while we're here. Um, I'm going to try to take this thing out of this mechanism surreptitiously. There we go. And take the front off so we can have an RCX. Take that off. So here's an RCX. There's a reason I'm doing all this, but let's just, while we're experimenting on, <coughs> and if I remember correctly, uh, view 1022 1022 so they're all um they're all if you can this is which way it's going to be best this thing lower so we can see the numbers um i guess it's a little bit this way there we go can you see the numbers i think you can see the numbers 1023 so i'll just experiment with this right off the bat this is a temperature sensor that i fixed and i'm going to put on port one 583 let's see how hot i am so it's going down again when it's just like the light sensor as it gets brighter the, the numbers go down so this is raw not celsius or fahrenheit um 542 538 do not use this for medical purposes do not stick this thing in your mouth um going down anyway so that's the temperature sensor that i fixed uh where's that light sensor that i had five seconds ago <coughs> excuse me here's a light sensor Look around 494, looking at the dark here, 496. Is that working? 
Running so oh sorry it's not working. Uh okay, run it. Oh sorry. Uh view um program two run. Um now it's on as a light center. No, that's gonna be important to be there we go. No, it's also holy moly. View and this is my problem. Why is that not working? I was working over here. It's working there, but uh, <clears throat> this is what we call experimenting as we go. Finally, <laughs> so we look at the ground, we look over there, six of them. Okay, so that the light sensor works fine. <clears throat> um, let's see if the light sensor will still stay on when I stop the program. So the light sensor stays on and it's still working. Yes, it's working. So I'm going to quickly connect. That took a little while, sorry about that. I'm gonna quickly connect potentometer or whatever I call it. I always forget the name of these things. I'm gonna connect it to the same port, put that over there. And let's see if this thing actually still does something because I made this, it's gotta be well over a decade ago. So right now, 640, 650. Wow, I'm turning it. Let me just, I just wish it could be an angle. Let me put it there like that. There we go. <laughs> now I can go down here and turn this thing. There, see, rotation. And not the most accurate because you can see it fluctuate a little bit. Wow, that thing still works. I made that thing before I met Sandy. <laughs> and I used a soldering iron to melt the blue a one by two brick to the plate on top so it would stay there. Um because I what basically what I do is I melted or basically made the end of the uh the the axle fit into where the uh whatever the nub was into the uh, there. So there you go. Look at that. That still works after all these years. But what I pulled this thing out for, because I remembered this, this is another thing that I got this guy right here now i had to order him from techno stuff <laughs> and techno stuff was a company a third-party company uh that supplied third-party sensors for rc access so <coughs> what i wanted to do is see if this thing registers it's jumping around It's jumping around. That's sad. It's not being consistent. Because you have to have movement in order for it to work. Let's see if I put it here. No, it's, it's, it's not working. I don't know if I have to set a different... Um, maybe it's just this way. No. <laughs> Sometimes they are... Maybe it's just dead <laughs> after all these years, which wouldn't surprise me because this is like a million years ago. What's it flying around for? Yeah, I don't know if I have to calibrate this thing or something or put on a different sensor port. Yeah, it's not going to work. I was hoping that it would pick up the, because uh, this is like a heat sensor, like a motion sensor for a house for an alarm system. And I saw the schematics years ago, how to connect a um, a sensor, like a heat sensor or a movement sensor to the RCX. There was a website that went into, hey, you can buy this thing from whatever before Amazon. And you can wire it up this way and connect it to the two wires here. And then it would work as an RCX sensor. But um, this one's not working unfortunately looking at me directly so it's it's too variable so i'm just gonna go back to lights. i was hoping that this would work because i just put that down but say la vie. it was a thought and it took me a while to find a box because <laughs> that was it's been a while since i held this thing out um <coughs> I, I don't think i'll be able to dig up anything on it oh and this thing let's see what is that oh this is a LDCC or a DCC chip for trains. And I had this thing sitting inside 
one of our train motors and I don't know if it's salvageable, but I got three or four still left in the original packaging that I didn't get around to using. And right in the bottom here, I have the back plate of one of my motors that fried, and I wanted to see what's inside, so I took it apart. And I think I threw it to the rest of the motor. Um, this is also in there for no reason, but that's sad. Um, yeah, that's that's now we're at the bottom of the, the dregs of the bin. Uh, but it was really neat seeing... Uh, this guy working again because again i made that back in the early 2000s easily uh for an rtl toronto but we did have mostly a um a rule that you had to the whole thing had to be your watts had to be built with 100 percent lego uh there were some exceptions um but uh i don't think i ever used that in an actual robot competition but i did build it in some of my home robots to get um that variableness so it's like it's basically it's an angle sensor um, and I can't remember what this was for. This was an adapter and I don't have the other end anymore. Uh, I think what I did is, um, <coughs> this, excuse me, this was their universal adapter to other sensors. <coughs> there was one that I got in a, in a, and I'm not sure how I got it. Let's see if, let's see if it does anything in here. Oh, this is a rotation sensor. I'm not going to do a thing. This is a... No, nothing. So, it'll be. Uh, it was worth a shot. And I'm glad I found it. Um, and you got to see some of my uh, fixed sensors. Look at that. Look at that nice job that Battery Power Bricks showed on his YouTube video how to do. And I'm very happy about that. And again, because the, uh, the spool of wire that you get from Amazon that is virtually identical to the original Lego wire. And I'll show you that because this is... Uh, I love going off on tangents, as you know. This is an original Lego wire. Uh, my friend bought his son an RCX. His son is now 24, 25, but... <coughs> When we were hardcore into building robots, my buddy, who was a programmer, helped me program my robot, and he had a son, uh, and he thought his son would really, really like getting into robots. So about when the RCX 2.0 came out, he bought the RCX 2.0 kit, and he also bought the 9-volt battery box kit that came with a third motor, or another motor, and a wire in a battery box. And his son built one of the robots out of the box and then never played with it again. <laughs> <laughs> the RCX box. So my buddy gives me that RCX 2.0 with the box. Of course, the, I burned the box, by the way. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I burned the box. Um, uh, but I have the RCX here. Um, but the wire was still in the cellophane. And it actually was as mint as mint can be when I took it out and hung it on the wall over there. I put all my wires, I used to put all my wires in there. And you can see, without ever being used, it's never come out of this this little thing, it's already turning gray, because it's that old. And it will it, this will start zombifying very, very soon. <laughs> so, but anyway, so this is the wire that we got back in the 90s. And this is the wire that, that comes off the spool. And you can tell that besides the fact that the, 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 the Lego wire starting to zombify. It's virtually identical. It has the same thickness. It fits between the studs. And I can show you that. So it fits because this is what we did, used to do all the time. It fits between the studs. And it has that um, silicone uh, covering. But hopefully, it's my understanding, is that this, after 20 years, will not zombify. <laughs> and yet, what happens is when you buy this spool, you can buy this spool, uh, 15.3, 50 feet, um, it comes in a six strand. Right now, I've, of course, I've already used half up. Uh, and so I kept on pulling off strands of like black and black wire. So that's a strand, two strand there. And I would fix my connectors like this one here. This is one I just, I made a while back. And so I would get the one meter or whatever. Uh, and I used the black and black wire. But then I have this whole length, 50 feet of this, the end wire, uh, which has the, the coat on it, basically the end left and right, whatever, remember the old ribbon cables. So it has a, a dotted wire and a black wire. And I said, what am I gonna do with the 50 foot like length of this stuff? 
And so I thought, I'm going to just do my sensors. When I do a sensor, I'm going to, quote unquote, polarize them. So the left wire is the white wire and the black wires. It makes no difference at all. <laughs> because because uh, Lego, when they built their sensor, was smart enough. It doesn't, doesn't matter how you put these things down. as It doesn't matter. But, so, but all my rotation sensors, my touch sensors, and my temperature sensor, I'm using the, the, the one length of this wire instead of wasting it like with the other two. And I just use the, the, the black and black for just the connectors and the connectors on both ends so that these guys here. Uh, that's what I did so I don't have to, you know, and, and now I know, not that it matters at all, <laughs> but now my sensors are all color-coded and I know they're mine. <laughs> so, now somebody else starts doing this. Um, so, oops, that, oh, get it later. So, so, that was a quick walk down <coughs> some very, very obscure memory lanes there um, and some catch-up on this stuff. I am still sporadically making my own wire as I need them, but you can just tell this is already going when it came out of the package. It was, it was, it was as black as the original and as black as this stuff here when it came out of the package. And you can just tell that it's already starting to zombify, which is really, really sad because <clears throat> I think for me, not necessarily for the world, not necessarily for competitions, not necessarily for STEM, not necessarily for education, but Lego for the hobbyist peaked at the RCX because there was more third-party stuff, more software, more this, that, and the other thing for the RCX than the subsequent, as far as I know, the, the subsequent stuff that they started putting out, the NXT, the EV3, and whatever. Um, and, and again, just like I've said for basically literally everything, including... Uh, the classic space stuff, which, you know, let's see over there. <laughs> um, I'm not faulting Lego for always continuously improving the product and changing the product for the latest and greatest for uh, what they want to sell today. Because I am not their target audience. And I fully understand that I am not their target audience. <clears throat> so I do not mind at all that Lego has changed from the RCX to the NXT to the EV3 to the Boost to the whatever they got now. Um, and, and moving, uh, I think things onto the cell phone, let the cell phone do the programming instead of the, having the brick do the programming. Cause this thing was expensive. I'm going to say that at the time, uh, the RCX was two ninety nine, I think in the store. And I bought two after a while and that was $600. And then I got a few more and I mean, it started coming down in price after a while, but you know, $300, my, my Commodore 64 was $300 back in 1982 <laughs> or 1983. Like, like I bought a full computer back in the day and the drives for the, uh, the 1541. I remember paying 499 or something like that. And the monitor was even more expensive than the computer. Um, but you know, if you get things around $300, people are going to buy it. Uh, now it's, that's different now. It's not the $300 mark because people, people buy PS fives. I'm going off on tangents. I'm not going to bother. Um, but offshoring the actual processing from the brick onto the phone or some other device is brilliant because you don't have to pay for this. You just have to have wires going to a motor or something, some interface, Bluetooth interface, and let the computer, let the let the Apple company make the computer, let the um, Android company make the computer, Android device do all the processing. Because, you know, we sit there and play video games on it all day. <coughs> it has good processors in it. So why, why are we reinventing the wheel by putting the processor on a brick? that connects to the motors and sensors and stuff like that. And let, let, let the Bluetooth take care of it. Um, I'm not faulting him for that. My problem is I'm old school. This was my first and this is my favorite. As simple as that. Uh, I know that I've said a lot about my first being my favorite Star Trek, Super Tramp, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> but it's true. I, I do. This is, I'm going to talk about one part of the tangent I went on yesterday. I am loyal to things that things, people, places, whatever. I'm loyal to things that I absolutely adore. I'm like a little puppy. <laughs> if, 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 if I love something, you're not getting rid of me. If I love someone, it's, that's it. Now I, I have left people that I have loved and they've, you know, abused that and blah, blah, blah. And that's where the tangent was going, but I'm not going to go down that path. But I, I, I appreciate people until they don't appreciate me. And, and so my love is given usually pretty freely 
uh, my appreciation is given, uh, just talking and just showing up and just being pleasant. And then you have my appreciation. <laughs> and the longer we're together, the greater that appreciation grows. Um, and so I do have friends from when I was seven years old still in my life. I do have friends from high school. I have most of my friends from my early 20s, the friends that I have today. I have most of my friends here in the, in the, in the groups of Lego that I've known since, you know, 1998 that I met through this guy. <laughs> this guy introduced me to so many wonderful people back in the day from 1998 to 2000, whenever, when RTL folded and then Toro Lug. <clears throat> I'm not saying I wouldn't have found a Lego group without this guy, but this guy... Right here, the RCX, uh, not necessarily this one. I'm not sure where I got this one. I don't keep track. But uh, the RCX got me into robot competitions, which got me into meeting RTL Toronto, which got me into going out for dinners and blah, blah, blah. This here started the dinner with Dave and Sandy the second Friday every month. And that's because of Callum, who I met through this. And he is one of my most personal and close and wonderful friends ever. I really, really respect him and adore him. And, and, and you know, I just <clears throat> can't think the, thank the world enough for him. Uh, and my friend Jeff and my friend Janie and like literally everybody else that, are, that I classify as my friends and including the people I've never physically met in the real world, including you guys who are watching this. And this is, I think I've mentioned that a few times now. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to go off on another tangent about other stuff. Um, uh, but, um, I'm going to pack this up. Um, I was hoping that the, the sensor, the, the heat sensor and or movement sensor, whatever was going to work, but it doesn't, it's probably dead after sitting in storage for 20 years. Uh, say la vie. I'm just going to go work on the light sensor. Here we go. Light sensor and get that working and build little platforms that people can wave their hands over and figure out where we go from there because Hey, keep it simple. <laughs> So I will talk to everybody soon. Everybody out there, stay safe, take care. And um, yeah, see you.